Today's lesson is over linear versus nonlinear. Throughout this year, you're going to be learning four types of functions. Linear, um, exponential, quadratic, and absolute value functions, and we'll be comparing more of them as it goes. So right now, you only know the one function, so you're just comparing linear versus nonlinear. After you learn exponential, you'll do linear, exponential, and other, and then we'll go from there. Does that make sense? So each unit, we will be building on our function so that you can see what the difference is among these um, four different types of functions you're going to be learning. So let's first talk about this. How can you tell a function is linear on a graph? What do you look for if it's linear on a graph? Raise your hand. Raise your hand and tell me what you look for if it's linear on a graph. Emma? Oh, wait. A straight line? Just a straight line. The definition of a line is that it's straight. So really emphasizing the fact that it must be straight, right? That does not mean that even though there's like straight ridges and edges in there, right? Like you can't do steps even though everything might be straight. It just has to be one smooth, continuous line. Okay. Okay, so that was a really good point that you just brought up, Kaylee. A lot of kids are going to get this confused on your test. There's a difference between being a function and not a function in linear versus nonlinear. So let's talk about that real quick because this is something that comes up every year. So I'm glad that you brought that up. So function versus not a function. Me, what do you look for if it's a function versus not a function? Tanari? So you can use the vertical line test. Also, what else do you look for? That, yeah, the domain shouldn't repeat, right? So that's one thing. That's function versus not a function. Versus linear versus nonlinear. So on a graph, so these are two different thing, areas we're talking about today. Does that make sense? The first thing you learn the very first day of the unit, this one we're learning the very last day of the unit. So it's kind of interesting that that's a cap end, but the thing is you guys will get those mixed up. So make sure you separate those in your mind. So first of all, function versus not a function is vertical line test and like that domain not repeating, right? Whereas this is seeing, is it a straight line? That's one of the things you're looking for. Is it a line versus is it a function? Okay, those are the two questions you need to ask yourself. So from an equation, you can look for a couple things. You can make sure that the x is raised to a power of 1. But you guys don't see that power. A lot of people like to see, treat this as there is no exponent. Because technically, in y equals mx plus b, is the x, does the x even have an exponent on it? Mm -mm. No, but it has an exponent of 1 because nothing's there. So that's why it's 1. You can look for specific forms. Does it look like slope-intercept? What's another form you guys have learned? Point-slope. And standard. Very good. So again, this is not the same as looking for a function. This is saying, is, does this equation form a line? This is saying, does this equation form a line? Does this graph form a line? Function versus not a function could be any shape. Do you understand that? It could be any curve. It could be any line. They are two different things. Okay, if you have a table of values, what do you look for? What do you look for in a table of values if it's linear? What do you look for in a, t for, in a table of values to see if it's linear or not? Yeah? Uh, is that That's a function. Uh, Be careful. So this is why we're talking about these kind of together at the same time, because you just responded to, is it a function, not is it a line? Do you see how those are two different things? So if it had said, is it a function, you look for the repeated domains. But how do you decide it's a line from a table? Tanari? You look for that constant rate of change. <laughs> okay. 
So you do a change in y over change in x. Find the change in y over change in x. So again, let's backtrack again. Function versus not a function. On a graph, if you're looking for a function versus not a function, you do the vertical line test, right? But for a, is it a line question, you're looking, does it form a straight continuous line? Those are two different things. If you're confused by what I'm saying, raise your hand and ask a question. From an equation, we really haven't done function versus not a function. Okay, just so you guys are aware. We don't really do that with you guys yet. You guys will probably talk about that more as you get into higher classes. But for the line, you're looking for that x value to be raised to a power of 1. So the x value needs to be raised to a power of 1. Does everybody understand that? So, and then you can look for those forms as well. From a table, if it's a line, it will have a constant rate of change when you do the slope. If it asks you if it's a function from a table, that's when you're looking for that repeat, repeated domain. So the words, you've got to look for the word function, not even the word function, because sometimes the question is, well, is this a linear function? Okay, so that confuses you guys too. So you want to look for the word linear. If it says linear function, that means it does it form a line. If it just says function, then you're looking for the repeated domains. Okay, does that make sense? Because it will say linear function, so don't get that confused, even though it says the word function there, all right? If it asks if it's a linear function, it's asking, and does it form a straight line, okay? How about in context? How do you know if something's linear? What do you look for? What are we looking for there? What? Like a word problem. What could you look for in a word problem to determine if it's a linear? Yeah? Keywords. Keywords like what? I don't know. Straight line. It doesn't say that usually in context. Constant rate of change. It might have a, it just needs to have a constant rate of change. Is it adding or subtracting the same amount each time? So a constant rate of change. Is it adding or subtracting the same amount each time? All right, put that written down, and then we'll get into some examples for the day. linear or nonlinear. So these are in equations. So sometimes it says, sometimes it might be worded this way. Is this a linear function? That's when it gets confusing to you guys. This is when it gets confusing to you guys. Is this a linear function? Notice it says the word function here, right? But it also says the word Linear. That means you're looking for does it form a straight line, not the double domain. Okay? You guys understand that? So let's go through these here. Jayla, how about number or number? How about letter A? Is that linear or nonlinear? And it's from an equation. Huh? What do you think? It's linear. What form is this in? Slope-intercept form. Also, the exponent is? One. one, even though you can't see it, right? There's technically an exponent of one. So it's linear for multiple reasons. Number one, has an exponent of one. You do not have to explain it on your homework if it doesn't ask, but this is because it's notes, so I want you guys to be able to look back and understand why it is, okay? Technically, there's a 1 there. And 2, it's in y equals mx plus b form, which is slope-intercept form. Again, this does, if it doesn't ask you to explain on your homework, you don't have to explain it. I'm doing this right now 
so that if you go back to use your notes, you know why we just decided it was linear. Does that make sense? Otherwise, your notes aren't really, there's no purpose to them if you can't even use them. Okay, Brian, that next one, B, do you think that's linear or nonlinear? Why do you think it's linear? Does it have an exponent of 1? Does x have an exponent of 1? No, the exponent is what? X. The exponent is x. So this is nonlinear. And the reason is the exponent is x and not 1. And x is not to the first power. Jordan, C. Linear or nonlinear? Nonlinear, why? Yeah, the highest exponent is 2 rather than 1. Do you want to do the next one, Josh? And why? Yeah, the the highest the biggest exponent is three rather than one. Go. How about E? Linear. What form is that technically? Miguel. Miguel. What did you say? Yes. So it's twofold. It has the highest exponent is one. So the highest exponent on X is one. And it's in y equals mx plus b form. What? I know it's, you said because, are you mad because it's 2x? No. Oh, I, I got confused. Is that why you're saying yeah. but? Okay. Do you see it now? Yeah. Okay, finally. Cassie, how about f? What did you say, sorry? Linear. And why? It can be put into slope form, step form. What is this one? What form is this? So two things, right? It's in standard form, you're right. And two is that the highest exponent is? So, yeah, highest exponent on x is 1. And this is technically standard form. All right, questions on determining linear versus nonlinear from an equation. So again, notice it says... There's different ways the directions can read. It can say, is the situation linear or nonlinear? Or it could say, is this a linear function? Okay? Even though it says the word function in there, don't let it trick you to think that it means, does it pass the vertical line test? Okay? No. This one is saying, does it form a straight line? If you were to graph it, does it form a straight line? All right. Looking at tables now. Is the situation linear or nonlinear? Again. Or it could be written as, is this a linear function? Again, notice, notice that the word function is in here, but the word linear is also in here. So this is asking, is this a line? Not, is this a function? All right? So be careful. It's not, it's asking, does it form a straight line? Does it have a constant rate of change? It is not asking, does it pass the vertical line test? So we need to find the slope, and when you find the slope, you need to do the slope at every single point. So you do a change in y over a change in x, 
a change in y over a change in x, a change in y over a change in x. And you check the slopes at every single point to make sure it's constant. Is your slope constant? Yeah. So is this linear, Colin? Yes. Yes, it is. So it's linear because it has a constant rate of change of 45. Boys. So I'm going to say ROC means rate of change. So if you don't feel like writing that out a hundred times, you know, it is 45 of 45. Yeah, go ahead. Go quickly, please. All right, boys. All right, so we do the same thing on that next table there. You do the change in y's over the change in x. So what is it from 162 to 118? Is it 44? Can somebody take a calculator out and actually do it for me, please? When you're in math class, your calculator should be on your desk. Yeah, you're just, you just calculator. Yeah, it's 44. So you're subtracting 44 and adding 2, right? So what's happening from 118 to 96? Subtracting 22 and adding 1. And then you're subtracting 66. And adding 3. So from first glance, does this look linear to you? No. No. So this is why you must check your slope at every single division. So negative 44 divided by 2 is negative 22. Negative 22 over 1 is negative 22. And negative 66 over 3 is negative 22. So is this linear? Yes. Yeah, it does actually have a constant rate of change of negative 22. For the like negative 44, because you um, the first is oh, second box is plus two, so that's how you got it. Yeah, because one plus two is three, three plus one is four, four plus three is seven. Okay. And then I just did 162 minus 40, 144 is 118 to get there. Does that make sense? Yeah. yeah. Can I abbreviate constant rate of change to croc? <laughs> no, I already let you put ROC. Also, crocs make me think of the shoe, and I don't really want to think of the shoe. <laughs> Um, is this situation linear or nonlinear? So again, it could have been worded, is this a linear function? So again, focus. Focus. Focus up here. It's asking if it's a linear function, meaning does it form a line, not is it a function? It's not asking if it passes the vertical line test or has two x's repeating. So make sure you're paying attention to directions on your test. So this is adding 40, adding 40, adding 40, adding 5, adding 5, adding 5. So each of our slopes is 40 over 5, right? Mm -hmm. Which is 8. And in this case, what is the... 
What is the um, unit on this, guys? Money. Money per what? No, I think it's number of eight dollars per car because I think it's the number of cars washed. So since it's a, it has units on it, you should use the units. What's up? <laughs> Just Good luck. Well, I don't know what else to give you there, Kyle. I'm trying. Do it for him. I did. But I did give you a good enough base. All right. She's a good teacher, believe it or not. Bye. All right. So is this one linear? Yes. Yes, it has a constant rate of change of eight dollars per car. Now I'm going to laugh all day while I'm writing it. I'm just going to think of a crop. <laughs> my, my next hour is going to be like, why are you giggling to yourself? I'll be like, don't worry about it. All right, and finally, shh, is this last one linear? No. No, the rate of change is not constant, right? It's going 20 over, or 5 over 1. Then it says 10 over 1. So right away you can say that it's not. So it's nonlinear because there is not a constant rate of change. So it's not a crock? It's not a crock. Right. The left one's a crock. The other one isn't. No crock. It doesn't have a crock. One's a crock. It doesn't have a crock. I'm going to write crock. I can't. I can't. All right, questions before we move on to graphs. Okay, so again, just I'm going to reiterate this for like the hundredth time already. So please pay attention. This is asking if it's a linear function, meaning does it have a constant rate of change from a table? It's not saying is this a function. If it said is it a function, then you'd be looking for that domain to repeat, okay? Got it? Okay, again, is the situation linear or nonlinear? Or it might ask you, is this a linear function? So again, just because it has the word function does not mean it does it pass the vertical line test. This is asking, does it form a line because it has the word linear in it? So Jana, is that first one linear or nonlinear? Nonlinear, it's a curve, not a line. <laughs> it does not ask you, is it a function? It's not asking you if it passes the vertical line test. RC, how about that second graph there? Um, linear. Linear, it's a straight line, right? So a continuous straight line. No. There are no turns. There are no bumps. It's just nice and smooth. It's a straight line. Guys, we're almost done. We have two more slides. Please pay attention.
Mike, that first graph on the left, linear or nonlinear? Linear. So it goes straight? No, no, no. There's no curves or bumps or anything in it? Because I see a good curve in there, right? <laughs> so is this linear? That's only a nonlinear. It has a curve. Okay, Connor, this graph here, linear or nonlinear? Nonlinear, why? Curves and bumps, it's not straight. The equation. It's just telling you the equation of that line, or that curve, I should say. Okay, last slide, and then you guys can work on your review for the rest of the hour. Wait, we don't get homework? It's part of the homework. I mean, the first few questions are these things. Oh. So. Okay. Okay, is the situation linear or nonlinear? So remember, you're looking for a constant addition or subtraction for it to be linear. So the first one says, Charlie conducted an experiment to see how much bacteria is on his toothbrush. There are two bacteria on his toothbrush on day one, and the number of bacteria tripled every day. Riley, is that linear or nonlinear? Is that constant addition or no? Uh, linear. What is it adding each time? Uh, uh, it's adding two. Oh, wait, no. When is it being multiplying? It's multiplying, so is that linear? No. No, linear is addition or subtraction, not uh, multiplication. So this is nonlinear because it is multiplication and not addition or subtraction. one week. On the first day, she sold seven tasty cups of lemonade. On the third day, she sold 11. Tasty. On the seventh day, oh, this is seven days. She sold 19 cups of the product. So is this linear? So let's look at this. On the first day, she sold seven, right? On the third day, she sold 11. And on the seventh day, she sold 19. So that's 4 and that's 7, right? No, that's 8. Thank you. And that's 2 and that's 4. So I have 4 over 2 and 8 over 4, which both are 2, two cups per day, right? So is this linear or nonlinear? Linear. Linear. She sells 2 cups per day. All right. So you add two. 